Hey, here's a, here's another side from the another slide from the side of the foot mount actuator. Again, we get a better view of the radial arm damper and coming off of the jack shaft for the uh, uh, foot mounted actuator. To this point, nothing's been done on the boiler. These are just before pictures, just kind of bringing everything together from from what we talked about. Now, now here's where some work is getting done. Um, foot mount actuator is now gone. If you notice, all the linkage is gone. Um, we started to mount the kicker box on the side of the main panel with the um, sub-base for the uh, Honeywell Control Links controller. The uh, flame safeguard is out. It's, gonna, it's being upgraded right now. It's going to have a new RM7800 in there. Um, and the one thing you'd want to take note of is at the oil metering valve here, we started to put the uh, bracket on in the field. The, the field applied bracket for the uh, oil metering valve. Okay, uh, a little bit further along in the in the installation here, we have the actuator mounted for the radial arm air damper. Uh, you'll notice a number of conduits coming out. The conduits are for the control wiring and for the uh, um, uh, power wiring for the actuator. Up on, up on top, you see the kicker box with the color touchscreen display mounted in it. And it looks like there is, um, has been some programming done on it. There's a, it looks like there's a curve on it already. Flame safeguards in the panel right next to it. And if you look right underneath the, um, the fan cover here, you see the uh, servo that we're going to take a look at, and I believe in the next slide, for the oil metering valve. And there's the oil metering valve with the servo mounted to it. And again, the field adapted bracket that, that, that's put in place. Um, again, we have the conduits coming out for the control wiring, and we have the conduits coming out for the uh, power wiring for the actuator. And here, here's the gas valve that we spoke about uh, earlier that we couldn't see. Now, you can either replace the gas valve entire, in, in its entirety, or you can just put the servo on the gas valve itself. Um, and in this case, it looks like we just provided a servo on the, on the existing gas valve. Uh, another close-up picture of the color touchscreen display. Uh, it already looks like there is a, 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 small, a small curve already installed and commissioned on the uh, on the display here and um, we're getting close to being completed with the installation <clears throat> and there it is completed um, now this boiler obviously isn't the first two we were looking at um, but this is a great representation of what it looks like after um, you have the conduits all coming back to the junction box that's been installed and the um, linkage is completely gone and ready to ready to operate for the customer for a long time. All right, this is Bob again talking about uh, valve proving. Valve proving is a system in which you replace the normally open vent valve in a double block and bleed with a pressure switch. Then by staging the opening of uh, the two main valves, you can monitor pressure to test the uh, leakage, if any, of the valves. And what does it do for you? It saves on utility costs, natural gas escaping from a leak, you're stuck open vent valve during burner firing, and the vent valve should be closed. Uh, safety, which is really the key driver here, each burner cycle tests to identify a failing valve, avoiding a potentially unsafe condition. Uh, we mentioned that you replace the vent valve, so you eliminate installation and maintenance costs associated with vent valves and piping from a traditional double block and bleed. One, excuse me, one thing to keep in mind here is that local uh, regulations may not permit this, so you have to be sure. Finally, reduced emissions, reduces natural gas escaping from a leak or stuck open in vent valve during burner firing. This was particularly uh, important to a job that I did a number of years ago where the EPA was coming around advising the customer that they were emitting too much into the atmosphere. So this provided an alternative to that. And finally, just a quick uh, commercial on Delphi, the new uh, combustion efficiency panel. This panel com combines the flame safeguard control, 
fuel air ratio control, the option for O2 trim, the option for VFD control, all into one pre-wired panel. This, uh, this is actually a subject uh, training session in itself, but I did want to make everybody aware that it's out there for those uh, applications requiring O2 trim or VFD control. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. Uh, this is Chuck Cuddy again here in Milwaukee, and Bob did a great job on, on tackling a lot of the uh, basics for uh, um, the linkages controls in, in, the, in the previous slides to this. And uh, at Industrial Controls, we, we do work with a number of different manufacturers, Honeywell being, um, being one and FireEye being the other one. And what I'm going to do is take the opportunity to talk about uh, the FireEye version of the linkages controls, which is the PPC 6000 and the NX6100, which are a, 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 uh, ha have a little bit a different fit than the uh, control links in the Delphi, which helps us address some more some, some additional customer needs. Okay, first I'm going to talk about the um, FireEye uh, PPC 6000. Um, this is a very similar to the Honeywell control links. It works with an existing flame safeguard. Um, it does allow for the use of a VFD on the combustion air fan if required and, and O2 trim if required. Um, it's a very flexible system. You can add it later on if, if you choose and elect not to work with it, but you decide in uh, three or four months down the road that it would be good, it's there for you to use. Um, there are uh, block programming and PID loops available in the controller itself. Uh, so you're allowed to do things like uh, drum level control or boiler feed water control or draft control inside the, inside the controller itself. And it, it, it really um, uh, it is a nice, tight, compact uh, system. S sequencing and lead and leg are standard for up to four boilers inside the PPC 6000. So um, I, I'm going to talk about VFD and sequencing a little bit later on in the presentation just to, to kind of um, stamp it a little bit more. But there's another way that you can really take a look at, at saving some energy is understanding how your boilers are used in your facility and um, uh, sequencing them properly and leading and lagging them properly. Uh, from an installation standpoint, Fire IPPC 6000 offers CAN bus communications. Real simple, CAN bus is um, a, a cable that has uh, four or five wires in it that carry power and control voltages through the through the, the building cable. And they're all daisy chained together. There's no home runs required. The parts for the Fire IPPC 6000 and the 6100 I'm going to talk about do come uh, loose uh, and we can panelize them. So again, it, it provides flexibility for, for customers or installers that uh, have room in an existing control panel. They can they can put this in. Uh, that existing panel, or we can provide them already panelized with a drawing uh, of the, the panel we're providing, or if required in a lot of instances, uh, a new set of boiler control drawings. Okay, you can go to the next one, please. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, the FireEye Nexus 6, NX6100 is uh, pretty much a carbon copy of what the 6000 is, except for two very big differences. Number one, the flame safeguard is provided inside the controller already, so if you have an existing outdated or obsolete flame safeguard, um, you can buy the 6100 and it provides that function and feature for you. And you also can have, as an option, a color touch screen available. <coughs> Pardon me. And that color touch screen is uh, allows certain control flexibility, for instance, if your boiler control room is 20 or 30 or 40 feet away from your boilers, um, you can put this color touch screen inside of the boiler control room and you can look at and, and, and view and see what's going on with up to four boilers at a time while you still have a display out at the uh, boiler for, um, for uh, uh, operation and, and going out and taking a look at it every, every hour or so. 